Hello to everyone. So just for you to know that the ontology community of practice of the CGR platform for big data and agriculture started a webinar series about the ontology product of the members of our community of practice. We want to know about uh, the, the content and their current use in key applications of platform. So the objective is to increase the knowledge about the current status of ontologies in agriculture, uh, how they are developed, what is their content, and also perhaps stimulate some collaborative curation and additional uses. So today, Meda, uh, Marie-Angélique and uh, Céline will present the agronomy ontology uh, about film uh, management practices and um, why it was necessary to develop this ontology and how it is currently uh, developed and how it is used in the context of the global agronomy field book called Agrofilms. Great, thank you, Elizabeth. First, we're going to start off with Meda Devari. She's going to present. Um, she is representing IFPRI. She's a senior fellow, research fellow, and module lead at the CGIR Big Data Platform for Agriculture. Over to you, Meda. Thank you, Aman. So I lead the, the organized module of CGR's Big Data Platform, and the module is all about, as you might guess, organizing data and getting data to be both open as well as um, usable by other people. So what are some of the questions that, that we might encounter? I mean, it's always good to start from what the, what the issues really are. So some of the real, real life questions that we've encountered are, you know, something like this. What does variation in crop response to fertilizer look like for sub-Saharan Africa? Um, I need data for my crop model. Um, where am I gonna find that? Um, I want to predict land use change between 2030 and 2050 at both national and subnational level in South Asia or anywhere in the world really. Um, where do I go for that data? Well, now we have through the big data platform, we have um, a, a data portal called Guardian, which looks across all of CGIR centers, as well as several other entities uh, in the agricultural domain, including USAID, USDA, uh, the World Bank, some a portion of the World Bank's uh, data assets, um, the, the, the government of India's open data portal, the agricultural part of that, um, and a few other entities as well. So when you do a search like this in Guardian, what you, you'll see is a bunch of um, hits on publications and data sets. I've clicked on the data sets link here so you can see uh, some of the the data sets that are coming from, you know, a bunch of the CGIR centers, um, as well as USDA here. But you'll also see data depending on the searches that you're doing, as I mentioned from, from the World Bank, from uh, the Government of India's Open Data Portal, and for agricultural research, that data is coming from ICAR, the Indian Council for Agricultural Research, USAID, DFID, USDA, um, and that list is growing as we develop Guardian more and more. So, the, the issue about finding data is a little bit better in hand now. You can go to a one-stop shop, you can find data. Um, we're still working on Guardian, we continue to improve it. Um, so we're getting to that point where we're creating a knowledge base for the data. Now, when you find the data, what does it look like? Um, this is data, a very, very well-described data set of, that I, I found from Guardian. And even if it's well described, what you see is, you know, some some questions about what these gaps are in these in these cells, um, some of the notations that keep changing, um, and some of these are described in the data. There are data variables. There's a tab, a metadata tab for this particular data set, and you see that for most data sets, that is still sort of a mystery. You know, if you're an agronomist, you might be able to guess what these things are, but not always. You continue on down the data set. Um, these two for, uh, columns, the fifth or sixth column, are still, you know, question marks. Um, the notations continue to change. And as you keep moving down the data set, this is about 8,000 rows of data for multiple countries in Africa. Again, now you see the notations changing. So here it looks like there's intercropping with pigeon pea. There was intercropping up above in the data set that wasn't noted. Um, the, 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 the treatments or what seem to be treatments are also changing. Um, and, and they're all noted very differently, even where there are commonalities. And this is just one data set across different countries. 
presumably with different people um, collecting that data. Uh, what's interesting is the language changes as well within the data set. Um, so while a lot of this, as I said, is well described, the, 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 the notations are well described, even for this data set, not all of it is. So even though you can find the data, um, can you actually reuse it? Can you actually understand what that data is telling you? So the question is, how do I collect or find well-described data? for model simulations that won't involve months of pain in terms of trying to contact the owners, trying to understand what that data is trying, you know, saying what those variables are trying to tell you. You might need standardized data to recommend your best bet intensive, uh, sustainable intensification possibilities. Um, you might be told, as, as CGIR scientists are increasingly told, uh, it's great to make your data, agronomic data, fair. Fair meaning make it findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. That means adhering to the FAIR principles. Well, how do I do this? Just give me the tools to do it, tell me how to do it, and maybe I will. So these are the kinds of issues that we're trying to address uh, through the project that we're going to describe, the three of us are going to describe today. I've already shown you Guardian. Uh, we're trying to get semantically enabled data. That's where the ontologies come in that you'll be hearing about today. Uh, to be able to query the, the vast data pool that is represented in the knowledge base that Guardian is. Um, in addition to that, we're building fair workflows into the Guardian data ecosystem so that whether or not you choose to put your, to make your data available to us, we would like to make available tools that allow you to more easily make historical data fair or data that's not collected using any field books. So that's part of that cog there. What, what we're gonna be talking about today and what I'm gonna be describing in a minute is how to generate data that's already semantically enabled. So this is the standardized data collection tools part of it, uh, which in, for the agronomy um, uh, domain is called AgroFIMS or the Agronomy Field Information Management System. I'm an agronomist myself. And so this is very near to my heart. Um, because I faced a lot of these issues that, that, I'm, that I've just described. Um, what AgroFIMS does is it allows you to standardize, uh, standardize your, your data at the collection point. So you're not having to monkey with it after you collect, after you publish, trying to struggle with it um, in, 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 in those terms. Um, we have enabled digital da data collection and uh, as well as quality checks, preliminary quality checks of the data. Um, and statistical reports. And I, I realized that through all of this, I did not include a link to AgroFIMS, but I see that Celine has been putting it in the chat. Thank you, Celine, for that. Um, and apologies for missing that. Um, again, the, the whole thing, the, 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 the collection, the ability to collect data is reliant on the fact that it's based on the agronomy ontology and other ontologies um, and aligns with the CG core metadata schema, which is a generalized um, or a customized uh, instance of an industry standard, the Dublin core metadata schema, which is what we use across all of our repositories. Right, so just diving into the field book, I'm gonna show you some quick screens uh, of what that looks like. Um, you'll have to play with it yourself. We hope that it's, we think it's quite user-friendly, um, but we're always happy, Celine and I, to, to meet with you individually and walk you through it in more detail. Um, so the field book is organized essentially based on kind of the suite of things that you would do in the field as an agronomist. The first thing you want to do is to describe your experiment. Um, so here are some of the screen, the, 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 the fields that I've taken from the screen that, that allows you to put in your experiment details. Um, and I've just shown you that, that when you click on any one of these drop down things like type of experiment there, um, you see a list of choices. So it's uh, wherever possible, we've included pick lists and all of the content of those pick lists is part of the ontology. Now, the other things I'm gonna describe to you here, there's a number of different screens that you step through in AgroFIMS. I'll just focus on the site, the crop, the, the, the design part of this, and the crop measurement part of it, just to give you a flavor of what this looks like. Now, when you go to site, the first thing you're gonna do is try to identify where your um, trials are set up. Um, so this is kind of a drop-down menu that's, that's organized by first level, second level, third level, fourth level, fifth level admin divisions. 
wherever um, the, the data is available, we go down to the fifth level admin. Where it's not, we stop at whatever's um, the authoritative source um, allows us to, to get to. So once you start zooming in on your on your um, on your uh, location, uh, the, the what you see is is the 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 tool fills in your lat long information. So that's kind of helpful as well. One of the things that we probably we, we will want to do is to be able to take your pin and drop it on your your site and hone in further that way, rather than having to know the names that you 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 are doing. So that's that that'll be coming soon. That's how you choose your site, and once you've done that, um, you go on to to the other parts of your of, of the screen that I showed you earlier. So here's the crop. Um, Oops, here's the crop part, um, the crop screens that, that you can see. Um, you can choose monocrop, intercrop, relay crop. Those choices will, can be modified as we get more input from users. We have a number of crops already pre-loaded uh, into the system uh, and more will be, be made available as we, as we continue the work on, on agrofins. It's completely reusable usable right now, by the way. Um, version one is already up and, and available for you to play with. Um, so you choose your crop. This is all, again, part of the ontology, all of these choices that you see. And once you do that, you can go in and specify an experimental design. So we've got some commonly used um, experimental designs in the agronomy for the agronomy domain already there. Um, and again, they're part of the ontology. So that when I specify uh, an RCBD and somebody else specifies uh, the same design and I'm you know a, a user who's looking for for whatever reason I'm using for I'm looking for certain experiments uh, with uh, that have to do with uh, wheat and bean intercrop say uh, which is a little unusual but it exists um, and uh, that are that are set up as RCBDs now because all of this is already standardized I can I can get at those at those uh, experiments at, at, at those trials. I specify my experimental unit. Uh, we have the choices of plot, field, and pot. Uh, I can specify the, the, the units, the dimensions of that experimental unit, and I go on and describe uh, my design. As part of the experimental design, I also want to specify what, my, what the factors are that I'm varying. So here, again, it's a huge pick list uh, with an autocomplete to make your life a little easier. So I can choose uh, nutrient element, type, and amount. I can choose my crop in case of an intercrop. I'll choose, you know, I may, I may be fertilizing the crops differently, so I'll want to do it that way. Um, here I've said, okay, I'm going to vary nitrogen, um, and I have two levels, uh, 100 kilograms per hectare and 50 kilograms per hectare that I'm testing. I'm applying, for each of those levels, I'm, I'm, I'm applying two applications or two splits. I'm applying the fertilizer in two splits, essentially. Um, and then I can click on the fertilizer application details, or I can add more nutrients. I may have NPK, sulfur, copper, whatever it is. We have all of that uh, possible for you to, to add. Once I click on the fertilizer application details, I get taken to another um, screen that looks like this. That is actually something we're very proud of. It took a lot of work for us to, to get to this stage. Um, and this is kudos to the, to the SIP development team because a lot of this development all of this development really is done at SIP except for the ontology uh, development work which is done uh, at Biodiversity or the Alliance uh, Biodiversity SEAT now. So I'm now at the screen where the the tool is helping me calculate the amount of product that I would need to add. So I specify okay I want to add 70 kilograms of uh, 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 70 kilograms per hectare of nitrogen in my first split. I can specify timing, days after planting, uh, the technique and the traction as well uh, by using these pick lists. And there, for most of these, uh, the, uh, there is an other when we have pick lists so that I can also, we've tried to give you flexibility so that if your choice is not part of the choices we have in the ontology, you can add that. And at some point we will try to build that into the ontology. That's the thinking behind this, behind the flexibility part of this. Um, so I'm adding 70-30 split for my 100 kilograms per hectare, and I'm adding a 40-10 split for my um, 50 kilogram per hectare uh, treatment of, of nitrogen. I'm adding it all as ammonium nitrate in this case. I can also specify using this little table that you see here, NPK, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, blah, blah. 
um, I can specify the, 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 the product content. So the content of these different, um, of these different elements in a particular formulation that I'm choosing to use. So we've tried to give you flexibility there. Once I do all of this, the, the tool will give me how much of the amount to add. Um, and then of course, it's not going down to the level of saying, okay, you, you, this is the amount per hectare. Now you have to sort of um, figure out, uh, you know, how much for your plot, uh, the, the amount for the plot. So that's coming in the, in, in the next iteration trying to get much more useful information to the user. For crop measurement, uh, you want to specify what are the different things you want to be measuring in the field. So here I'm going to say, okay, this is, I've clicked on the wheat tab. This is an intercrop that I'm showing you for, for bean and wheat. Um, and, I, and for wheat, I'm going to choose these different measurements. Uh, there's a number of parameters when I choose fresh weight, and I say here, uh, I want the total above ground biomass, including spikes. I, you know, I, I want the grain. All of that is possible as I go down through this, this uh, screen for crop measurements. I can, I can specify the units here. Um, in, we've, again, we've tried to give flexibility for people who might have other units. You know, if you're, if you're working as I did in Nepal, you might have uh, local specifications of unit. You might want to add those, at least for the time being. Um, so we've, we've tried to include some flexibility there to encourage use um, for people. Again, drop lists wherever possible, pick lists wherever possible with the potential to, to specify something uh, bespoke if it doesn't exist. Right, so what does this, all of this give you? Once I go through and, and um, walk my way through the field book, uh, through the, through the uh, system, I end up with a field book that looks like this. Um, which, which has randomized all the different treatments that I've specified. It gives me the, the plot number, the block number, the row number, depending on the design I choose, it will lay this out for me. Um, it'll lay out my treatments, and then it'll also give me uh, the, the, the things that I've specified for measurement. So I'm showing you here the tab uh, that, that says, okay, for common bean here, are the measurements I've specified. For, crop measure, for wheat here, are the crop measurements I've specified. These other tabs here are, are specifications through sort of the general practices that I want my team in the field to follow uh, for irrigation, for weeding, for um, uh, planting, et cetera. So all of those uh, directions are essentially already coded, uh, ontologized and, and given to my, to my team. Right, so once I've done this, what we've done is to work with uh, uh, the KD Smart application, so the KD Smart tool, which allows you to, to go out in the in the in the field and collect data digitally using either an Android um, telephone or or a tablet. So I can uh, KD Smart will now accept this field book that I've created, and it will allow me to step through the field and actually collect the data. It'll it'll, it'll give me what measurements I have specified or, or give to my field crew if I'm not the person collecting the, the data. Um, it'll, it'll give them an indication of what needs to be collected and when and, it, and how many of those samples need to be taken. Um, it'll, it'll give them uh, an idea also of the management scenario. You know, when do I irrigate? How do I irrigate? Etc. So all of that is, is codified because the field book has that information. Katie Smart collects it. And, and you can use that in the field. Uh, once you've collected your data, what you wanna do is send it back actually to AgroFIMS uh, for analysis because you can do preliminary analysis. Now you've chosen your statistical design, you said it's RCBD, um, you select your, the treatments you've specified and then you can go through and, and what you get, up, get out of it is a pre preliminary, uh, very simple sort of, um, statistical analysis, which you may choose to use. It's a nice Word document. You may choose to use parts of that in a publication or at, at, at you know, at worst, really. It, it's a very quick way of getting a sense of, of what your data actually looks like. So this is the soup to nuts that, that we've envisioned. We try to build value in for our users by already um, giving them metadata, by already making this data uh, uh, conformant with with the ontology, and this was really the use case um, for the development 
of the agronomy ontology. We, we realized that we needed a, a, a field book, we needed a, a way of standardizing field information so that now we can operate over large pools of data that are, are, are described in the same way. Um, we can op use our big data and machine learning techniques to do this and to gain more insight from the, the vast amounts of data that, that we're producing as an agro agronomy community, really. This is the soup to nuts approach of, of agrofims. Um, and I am almost done, but not without thanking uh, the many, many folks who have contributed to this. Uh, the, the people who are in bold are the ones who have done a lot of the work, of, of, of the lion's share of the work, but there have been a lot of others who have contributed quite significantly to this. So I want to acknowledge that. And with that, I'll stop and hand over uh, to the next speaker. Um, Aman, over to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Meda, for that comprehensive overview. So yeah, we'll pass it now on to Marie-Angelique Lepoix, um, Associate Scientist at the Alliance of Biodiversity International and SIAT. Over to you. Thank you, Aman. Hello, everyone. So in my presentation today, um, Céline and I, I mean, it's not my presentation is shared with Céline, we're going to present like the agronomy ontology. So I'm going to present more on the agronomy structure and content and how we build it. And Céline is going to explain how to use it to annotate like your data. So just a little bit of context, although Meda gave a good overview of what we wanted to do, really we wanted to have like an ontology that will be that could be used to harmonize like agronomic data. And when we started like this project, there was uh, there were a lot of ontology that was already uh, existing that were relevant to the agronomy domain. Uh, for instance, some covered like the crop measurement part, some the environment, but really there was a big gap in terms of how to describe like treatments that are really important and also experimental protocol. And this information is really important, particularly in the context of reusing the data, because if you don't have this information, maybe you can misinterpret part of the data. So for instance, if you look at yield, maize yield uh, data, and you don't know that some of the yield have been collecting under uh, really big like stress conditions, then maybe when you reuse the data set, I mean, you can, you can, uh, that can lead to some mistake. So that's really what we wanted to do with the agronomy ontology and the agronomy ontology now provides like all the semantics uh, needed to describe like agricultural trials. That's really what we focused on uh, from the experimental condition to agronomic practice to the implements used uh, for this practice to fertilizer and also to crop measurement. So as I said, when we started, a lot of ontology were already out there and that were uh, and were covering part of the agronomy domain. So what we wanted to do is not start from, from scratch, of course, but what we want, wanted to do is reuse terms that were directly relevant to, to an agronomy ontology into like the agronomy ontology and build only the classes and the terms or add only the classes and the terms that were really like specific to the agronomy domain. So how did we, so when we started, we started from this uh, basic formal ontology that is really like the glue to, to, to merge and to align together all the, the pieces and all these uh, different domain into the agronomy ontology because the BFO is providing like the common semantics that all these ontologies are, are using. So um, we also reuse like the chemical uh, ontology, KB, for everything, all the chemical entities that we needed, like from fertilizer or chemical that are applied during a, a, an experiment. We reuse like the environment ontology for everything related to environment. We reuse like the food ontology because sometimes some food derived of food products can be used as fertilizer as, as well. We reuse the OB ontology for everything related to study designs and protocols. We reuse the PETO ontology for like qualities, what we call qualities that are really like uh, components that are like the, the main component of, of uh, like the variables that are recording in the field. So that's going to give like a semantics to describe these uh, variables. We use like the plant experimental and condition ontology because it, it lists like and describe a, a lot of abi abiotic treatments and growing conditions. We reuse, of course, like the unit ontology because, as Meda said, we want to to annotate like uh, a data sets, and so the unit is is a big is a big part of, of that. 
And finally, because we focused like the ontology, at least for now, more on like the plants, uh, we reuse like the plant ontology for everything to get everything like the, the, the plant part that are harvested or thing like that from the PO. And we reuse like the TO and the crop ontology for the phenotypic threats and, and, and variables that I can be uh, recorded during the experiment. And so all of these uh, domain are, uh, yeah, are integrated nicely in the agronomy ontology. And then we focused our, our, our efforts on, on describing terms that were really specific to the agronomy ontology. So now I'm gonna explain a, a bit like the different types of terms that you're gonna find in the ontology and also how they, uh, yeah, how these terms are linked uh, to each other. So first, the main element really of the agronomy ontology is this notion of agriculture, agricultural experimental plot. So this is in a plot or that can be like an entire feed, that can be like a plot like in the, um, in, in, when you have a specific design that can be, so really this notion of, of plot is where you're gonna have like all the things happening. And this plot in the ontology, so this term or class in the ontology is linked to different concepts. So this plot is a thing, it's an object and is linked of course to the agricultural experiment. It is also linked as you can see here to things that can be measured on that plot, like, like the land or, or the area. So, and then on that plot, something happens. So you plant a crop and then you have a second type of, of terms that we have in the ontology that are gonna be processes. So here I represented like a planting process and, and the process is really like everything that is time bound. So it has a start, it, it has an end. And then you can see on, on the, the, the schema here that the elements that are linked to a process are different from the elements that are linked to like uh, objects or entities. So here for each process, you're gonna find, find like a list of what we call participants. So this participant can be like tools, like you can see it, or it can be like the seed that is used, like it, that you use or the crop, like the seed of the crop that you use uh, during your planting process. And then this way you can use the ontology to describe uh, what is happening like during over time uh, in your plot, then you can have like, for instance, an agronomic fertilization process happening. So this is the, the two types of terms. So the processes and then the object that we, we define in the ontology. And how all, all of this is linked uh, together. So now I'm gonna deep dive, uh, deep dive a little bit on in the agronomy, like the ontology structure. So as I said at the beginning, our goal was to uh, describe agricultural experiment. So this agricultural experiment follows like a design. So here it's a completely randomized design. And this agronomy experiment occurs and in this agricultural experimental plot. So that's really like the, the, the main element, as I said before. And then something happened also in this plot, like this fertilization process. And, and this fertilization process, as I started to say before, it can have like participants that are like, the, that is really the tool that you are using during your fertiliz uh, fertilization process. So here you're gonna use like a manual spreader, for instance. This uh, process has also like a different type of participant. So it's gonna be like the fertilizer itself that you are using. And here you can see that this, uh, this limestone is, is not coming from the agronomy ontology, but it's coming from the environment ontology. So this is how we link like the different domain together. And then what is really important in when we do like this fertilization process is to know like the, the amount of fertilizer that we're gonna apply in the field. And so we have like this inorganic, inorganic fertilizer amount class in the ontology. And then that is linked also to an external term and then to a unit. So this is like a simplified view. I mean, I, I just created one process and even like partially one uh, describe one process, but this is how like um, how the, the ontology is built. And really Celine is going to explain later how you use like the, 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 the classes to tag your data. But really once you, you tag your data, what you get is really like this entire graph thanks to the ontology and all this semantic that is really hidden between like all these uh, these terms. So now I'm just going to give you like a quick overview of things that you can find in, in the agronomy ontology. So as I said, you're going to find like different types of agricultural experiments uh, that are like described 
you're going to find like different agricultural processes. So we've seen like the planting process, fertilization process, but also irrigation, harvest, like, you know, land leveling, everything. Then you're going to find this stuff like agricultural implement that can be used like for, during these processes. And finally, you can you can also find like a list of, of fertilizer, like organic and inorganic uh, fertilizer that uh, that can be used during like a fertilization uh, process. And so that's just a, a quick overview of things that we have in the agronomy ontology. And I really invite you to to look more um, in into details of of the content because I mean I couldn't of course like uh, yeah make a screenshot of everything. So in terms of maintenance, so we followed like the OBO principle that are good, um, very good practice to follow when you build ontology. And uh, so the ontology is, is open. It's like uh, open to everyone to contribute. Um, it's like uh, version controlled and everything. So yeah, all of that is listed in, in the OBO family principle that we, are, uh, we followed. Uh, uh, for the ontology building itself, we use like the protege tool uh, in addition uh, of like the ontology development kit for dealing with all like the, the ontology development kit is like a suite of tools that we use for instance to deal with like reusing terms coming from external ontology in a very like in a, in a very easy way so we don't have to maintain all of that like this ontology development uh, kit take care of, of everything so make it really easy to to, to reuse external ontologies and also to make release of the ontology and, and things like that. And finally, the ontology uh, ontology is published on, on, on GitHub. You can find the link here. And uh, and we use GitHub so for the publishing, but also we have the issue tracker uh, on GitHub and Celine is gonna explain that uh, a bit uh, more later. Uh, and then in terms of next steps, so an ontology is never really finished. So we are still looking at adding more content. So it can be used like uh, broadly. And so the one of the big tasks that we want to continue is like to, um, to add more units of measurement that are really specific to the agronomy domain, because some of the units that are, that are used are, are currently missing. So that's really like something that we'd like to address. And also we want to continue uh, working with like the different external ontology and contribute to them in terms of terms that are like um, relevant for the agronomy domain. For instance, in terms of fertilizer, we added recently, uh, uh, we, I mean, we, we made the request to, to KB to add some uh, new fertilizer, but also we are going to do that for Envo. So we can have like more soil related uh, terms or fertilizer even uh, that can uh, be uh, re-imported then in the agronomy ontology. And finally, we would like to, to map agro with the ICASA variables. So the ICASA variables are like variables that are widely used by crop modelers. So we started looking at the ICASA variable when, uh, variables when we started like the agronomy ontology. But um, so we have some of them, but now we would like to, to like uh, have a more comprehensive list of, of these variables in, in the ontology and be sure that everything can be mapped easily. So then when the data are annotated using the ontology, the crop modeler can directly take the data and then use them um more easily without spending time cleaning the data and all of that so yeah so that's that's all for me great thank you so much marie and so yes we have uh, Maida has given us a comprehensive overview of the agro themes and you have given us the overview and insights into agro and now celine um, is going to give us kind of the link and, and some of those uh, more specific ideas and, and concepts that you referred to both in your in your presentation. So now over to Celine Elbat, who's Agro Curator, Agro Themes Coordinator and Consultant at IFPRI. Hi, thank you, Aman. Hello, everyone. Um, so yeah, as, as, as Marie told you, uh, she has presented in detail what is Agro and what is uh, its content. And so now I will tell you a bit more where to find Agro first and then how to use it. So to browse or download Agro, you have different options. But the first one is to go on the Agro webpage. So in the webpage, you will find all the information about the ontology. You have also the uh, contact and you have the possibility to browse or download Agro. 
You can also go on the ontology lookup service of EBI. I have to mention that maybe the OLS is going through maintenance and server migration. So by consequence, the ontology has not been updated there because they stopped doing updates during maintenance, but everything should be back to normal by April uh, 20th. You can also use Agro Portal. It's a platform developed by the LIAM and it's gathering uh, different ontology in agriculture. And Agro is also available in Ontobi. And finally, you can also go to GitHub and download Agro on your laptop. So you can choose the tool you are the more familiar with. And so now I will uh, show you how you can use uh, OLS EBI that is uh, well available uh, directly on the website of the OLS, or you can also find it on Agro webpage. On the OLS, you can use the search box to directly type the term you are looking for. And so then the OLS will give you uh, a list of uh, available terms. If you are a bit more adventurous uh, and you want to explore your hierarchy, you can directly dive into the ontology tree and look at diff different classes and subclasses. So here you can see the different uh, tillage uh, uh, process we have. So you don't only see the rich till, but you can see also mulch till, strip till, and the different hierarchy. And on the right side, you can also see the different relation between the classes. So uh, once you uh, select the term that you are interested in, you will have a definition of the term with the reference to this definition. You, as I say, you have also the, the relation of this term with the other classes of the ontology. And you will find a UAI. So this UAI is an identifier that is unique for each ontology term. And so this is what you will use to annotate your uh, document, your data. So basically what you will do is copy paste this URI in your file, in your Excel file or database to link uh, your data with the ontology. And so you will have to follow the same schema looking in the ontology for each term and copy pasting them uh, in your file for each of your term. So this is a quite cumbersome and time consuming exercise, but luckily there are some tools to help you uh, in this task. So the first tool I will talk about is uh, COPO. You might have heard uh, about it already. It's a portal linked to ontology that is the description of uh, data with ontologies. So um, when you go to COPO, first you upload your file. So here I've uploaded uh, an Excel file. And COPO is, dis is displaying the di different columns of my file. You can see them here. So I've selected the first column, the root fresh weight. And then I go to the search box. I type uh, the name of my term. And then COPO will look into the different ontologies what is uh, the closest term to the one I'm looking. So you can look at the different terms and their definition, and then you select the one that uh, you are interested in. It will be saved here, and COPO may directly make the link between this term and your column uh, in your file. And so you do this for all the different columns of your file, and at the end, you can export all the different annotation as a JSON file. So this is a great tool to help you annotate data files that are already created because COPO create the links between your file and the ontologies directly. However, if you have not yet collected your data, there is a great tool that I can recommend to use directly at the start of your agronomic experiment and it's, uh, well, agrofilms. So, um, Meda already uh, demonstrated the different steps to follow to create uh, a field book ready to collect agronomic data using a mobile device. And so once you have collected your data with your mobile device, you will get a file like this one with annotation in the column headers. Like here, you can see you have the UAI of Agro. 
And so the annotation are automatically uh, done without any additional, additional work from you. So you don't need to look uh, for each term in the ontology. This feature is currently under development. With Marie, we are um, adding the last missing term in Agro to be able to create this automatic uh, link between AgroFIMS and the ontology. It should be completed by the, by the, well, in the coming months. And so this will be an easy way to create data file that are well annotated uh, for the data, but also uh, for the metadata and without additional work for you uh, looking in the different uh, ontologies. So I hope our presentation uh, gets you motivated to use Agro. You can uh, find Agro via the different platforms that I shared with you in the chat box. And so once you use Agro, please feel free to send us your feedback. And Ontology is a collaborative tool that is always evolving. So if you are looking for a term and you don't find it, or maybe you like to discuss the hierarchy or provide any type of feedback, feel free to open an issue on our GitHub issue tracker and we'll uh, get into contact with you. So if you never use GitHub, you can, well, follow the link that I shared with you and then you go to the issues and you will find, well, you don't see it in the picture, but you will find here uh, like new issues. And so then you just uh, uh, say in the comment, whatever, you, whatever your feedback is, and then we'll get uh, in contact with you. So finally, I would like to thank the people that have contributed to Agro by giving us support and feedback. The ontology would not uh, be so strong without the advice. So thank you very much for your attention and I hope Agro and AgroFIMS will be useful for your research. Please feel free to contact us if you'd like to get uh, some support when uh, you are using them. Thank you, Celine. Um, just, to, just for clarification, if people want to get in contact, should they get in contact with you, Celine, or would it be any three of you? If it's a question more related to the ontology, they can get in contact with uh, Marie Angelique and myself. And mm -hmm. if the question is related to agrofems, uh, it's better to get in contact with Meda and myself. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Celine. And, and so now we are at our question and answer and comments session for the webinar today. So maybe we go to Elizabeth for your first question. Yeah, yeah. thank you for the demonstration of AgroFIMS. And my question was people, they need to create parameters on new variables on the fly, so that, that we know that. So how, I, uh, how do you, make sure that those new parameters and variables created in AgroFIM by the users can be feedback to the agronomology, what would be the process uh, accurately and what could be done in the future to make the submission more seamless. Thank you. So right now, the the way you submit things that are not in that you cannot find in in the ontology is uh, first of all you you try to describe something you're doing in the field if it's not there um, and you can't sort of compromise on, on and use what whatever is there if that doesn't meet your needs then you would choose the other um, part the other the other sort of uh, feature of the of most of these pick lists and add what it is that you want now once that's added um, we will we will hopefully be able to see it we haven't actually engineered the links right now that that provide a little alert for us or that put that term as an automatic sort of issue into the into the um, github uh, but we're going to have to wait. We're going to have to see what what is possible uh, with the developers. Uh, if that's possible, then that would be one way that we catch what the issue is and can get in touch with whoever has um, wants it uh, to make sure that we understand correctly before we create a new concept in agro, uh, in agro for it, or we look for a, a matching concept in another ontology that we might have missed. Um, so the short answer, I guess, is that we don't have the processes already available, but we have some thoughts as to as to how that can work. Um, and within the next year or so, we hope to to build all of that out. 
there are other things that that we 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 also are are trying to um, do that we see as kind of very high priority in terms of um, more improvements to the to the user interface, the accommodation of survey type trials, because that's something that our users have asked of us. Um, very large survey type trials, multi-locational trials with thousands of farmers. Right now, AgriFIMS cannot handle that very well, so that we're working on those bits first. Uh, but hopefully, we will also be able to uh, address this issue of, of the feedback um, as we go forward. We also want to make sure that we're not just enabling KD Smart as a digital uh, collection tool. We want to also make sure that people can use ODK, Open Data Kit, and uh, the Fieldbook app as well. So that those are two pieces of um, high priority uh, development that will happen in 2020. Great, thank you, Meida. We have several more questions coming in. We can start off with Olantan Bosun. My question is on AgroFin. With respect to using the KD Smart Data Collection tool, after the data has been collected with this app, how is the data aggregated? Where is it stored? So the data is collected uh, with your ad, uh, KD Smart uh, application on your phone, say, or your or your tablet. Once you've finished collecting the data, you ship it back in the form of the field book, essentially an Excel field book, back to AgroFIMS. You can do your statistical analysis, um, and you can either download the data and store it locally, or you can it, it's stored in the server, um, and you can you can play with it there. One of the things that we want to also enable is the, the ability to, um, to try and enable sort of people to share the data. Uh, and now with the implementation of Globus across CGIR, I would like to see whether we can bring um, somehow tie AgroFIMS to, to Guardian more tightly so that the Guardian now has uh, CG labs, collaborative guardian labs, which allow not only searching of the data, but but uh, secure sharing and, and transferring of data, as well as collaborative analysis of the data and the development of, of scripts and all of that. So it's it's a kind of a full service solution. And, and so if we can tie AgroFIMS and, and CG um, labs closely together, uh, then that data can be stored on the CG lab server and it'll be uh, a secure transfer or and secure sharing that's that's behind that with Globus putting the stamp on it. And Globus is uh, HIPAA certified so that it's it, it, it conforms to the very, very high levels of um, uh, privacy, private data sharing, secure data sharing that's uh, required in the medical domain. HIPAA is an American standard, but it, it basically um, allows you, it, it, it tells you that that uh, data sharing will be secure. Does that answer your question, Bosun? Yes, I mean, I, yes, I still have some little concern in the sense that I know that some scientists on some projects will rather want to have the data exclusive to themselves during the lifespan i mean the, the active life of the project until when except you do not mandate that the data should be sure. open should sure. be and open. they can do that they can download the data and and that that will be fine you know then it's residing on their uh laptop until they choose to make it uh until they choose to upload it to the institutional repository, for, 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 for example. But if they choose to work in CG labs, that is a secure environment. So just, just um, CG labs is something, you know, CGIR has not heard very much about because it's very hot off the presses, but um, that'll be coming as well. A, web, a webinar on that will be coming soon. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Mayda. Thank you for, for that question as well. So the next question is from Khaled. Thank you for the presentation. My question is about, is there any kind of integration currently done uh, between your team and the breeding management system uh, from IPP in terms of uh, unify the ontology and, and something like that? 
Yep, that's a good question as well. Um, so, so we started out actually looking at the BMS to see if there was a way in which we could modify the BMS in some way to make it uh, available also for agronomists and and conform, not conform, but but you know uh, appropriate for agronomists. But the issue there was that the uh, breeders are very much focused on germplasm, whereas agronomists. Uh, I won't say they don't care about germplasm, but that's not the focus of what they do. It's it's more the uh, the management, uh, and so we couldn't find a way to sort of make it appropriate for both. And and uh, where the integration now is is the fact that the ontology uh, provides that ability to to crosswalk across the two. So um, there's there's uh, the potential for um, once you have the data actually then you can sort of start to do some more seamless integration between breeding data and agronomic data because they're both reliant on ontologies. Um, that's that's the, the level of integration there is right now. Yeah, and, and also I would like to add uh, on, on that. I mean, we have been discussing with the technical team of the BMS to see how they could implement also the agronomy uh, ontology terms, particularly on the experimental condition in treatment into their systems. I mean, for the crop on uh, the part on the crop measurement, uh, they are using like the the crop ontology, so that's fine. I mean, these two parts are going to be um, more or less harmonized between like the agronomy system and the and, and the breeding management system, so that that's good. Although, as Meda said, I mean, there are some differences, but like most of the terms that are in common would be in common. So that's already something good. But yeah, we are in discussion with uh, the technical team also of the BMS. We had a meeting recently to to show them like the last advancement of, of the agronomy ontology to see how they could integrate that in, in their system. We have a question from Eddie. Um, so the question is on agro. What is the percentage of terms reused from other ontologies? How many new entries were added into agro? And how do you deal with updates when other ontologies sources of terms change? Percentage of term is about like 75% of the terms coming from external ontologies and 25% of terms coming from, from, from agro directly that we, we created. Um, and so, yeah, there, there's about like 500 something terms that we created like but, uh, on the, uh, under the agronomy ontology namespace. And how do we deal with the update in external ontology? That's why we are using like the ontology development kit suite of tools because that makes that very easy. So every time we update the agronomy ontology, we just make sure to run like the script that's going to check that everything is still in place. Sometimes we find like, you know, that some update might cause issues in the agronomy ontology, but then we work on, on fixing that. But yeah, at the end, by reusing the tools that are very like standards and, and, and well used in the OBO community, we, we can do that like really easily. So, so yeah, so that's how we do like to particularly to, to build like this, uh, the, this list of reuse uh, ex, uh, where we want to reuse ex, external ontology terms, and when we want to add like a terms that we we don't have, so that's also really easy. We just have a list of terms um, that that we want. So if someone make a request and say, "Oh, I want to add this fertilizer, for instance," and but we don't maintain really fertilizer in in, in agro at least like the inorganic one. So we will uh, ask KB to do it. And then once KB uh, add like the term, then we are going to import it in, in Agro. And really, I mean, we did it like recently and that's really, yeah, that works quite well to, to do like that because we cannot maintain everything. So it's easier to maintain what is really um, uh, directly relevant to the agronomy uh, domain and to let like the other like expert to maintain like, you know, list of chemicals or list of, uh, different like biomes or things like that. Great, thank you, Marie. We have another question that came in actually through our, our LinkedIn chat platform, and it's from Kathy Schlett from Data Co. And the question is, I think specifically for Marie, does agro include soil properties? We are working on a global soil information system for FAO. I think soil properties is where we meet. Yeah, so we import some, so we have a few soil properties in agro that are mainly re, uh, 
imported from the environment ontology. And they, I know that currently they are working, like they have a, a project to work on that, how to add like more, uh, more soil properties into the, the environment ontologies. So that's not something that we are going to maintain ourselves, but that's something that we are going to reuse from uh, this environment ontology. And, and I mean, I'd be happy to, to liaise with that, the environment uh, ontology uh, developer group to to yeah to provide like this feedback and and say that some terms might be needed and then we can like import them or yeah reuse them in the agronomy ontology so 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 we have them but yeah we we don't want to maintain like a, a list of so properties ourselves great thank you marie uh I don't see any more questions coming in. A lot of thank yous. Uh, thank you again for participating and thank you again to the presenters. I think uh, what we'll now do is, is wrap up. And um, again, thank you to the three presenters and those who have logged in today. I'm gonna hand it back over to Elizabeth to just let us know what's coming next. Thank you, Aman. So thank you for, to the three speakers for, for the very interesting and informative presentation. Uh, I think it was super useful and it was a, a successful webinar given the number of attendees. And this was the second webinar of the series about the community of practice products. We have a, an agenda, in fact, already. So we hope to get you online for the next webinars. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aman and Céline, to help me organizing this webinar. And thanks again to our speakers.